Kia ora and welcome to Worship at St. Mary by the Sea today. We continue our series called Faces of Our Faith, where we explore the bold and untold stories of our faith. Today we hear the story of Queen Vashti. She's often overlooked in our stories. Her story is one of refusal. Refusal to appear before the king. Refusal to be shown off as a possession. And what she did paved the way for Esther to become queen and to make the brave choice to appear uninvited before the king to ultimately save the Jewish people. There are so many stories, so many people who have gone before, so many faces, named and unnamed, each generation passing their faith to the next in worship and prayer and community, in acts of holy disobedience. We give thanks for the gift of story that reveals what is true. We are welcomed, we are loved, we belong, we can be brave. Let us worship our God together. Sometimes we forget that we are part of something greater, part of an intricate and complex world, beloved by the Creator. We forget that our words and our actions flow from us to impact on others. God forgives and heals us. We do not live as if we are loved. We do not love 
as we are commanded to love. We do not treasure the rest of the world as part of your creation. Forgive us. Know that Jesus, the word present at the beginning of creation, creator of the whole universe, desires us to be close and complete. Know you are beloved and forgiven. Go and love others. May we never forget the way you have created us, from the dust of the earth, from the earthly fragments belonging to one another and to you. Amen. Esther chapters 1 to 2. King Xerxes of Persia lived in the capital city of Susa and ruled 120 provinces from India to Ethiopia. During the third year of his rule, Xerxes gave a big dinner for all his officials and officers. The governors and leaders of the provinces were also invited, and even the commanders of the Persian and Median armies came. For 180 days, he showed off his wealth and spent a lot of money to impress his guests with the greatness of his kingdom. At the end of this time, King Xerxes gave another dinner and invited everyone in the city of Susa, no matter who they were. The eating and drinking lasted seven days in the beautiful palace gardens. The area was decorated with blue and white cotton curtains, tied back with purple linen cords that ran through silver rings, fastened to marble columns. Couches of gold and silver rested on the pavement that had all kinds of designs made from costly, bright-coloured stones of marble and mother-of-pearl. The guests drank from gold cups, and each cup had a different design. The king was generous and said to them, Drink all you want. Then he told his servants, Keep their cups full. While the men were enjoying themselves, Queen Vashti gave the women a big dinner inside the royal palace. By the seventh day, King Xerxes was feeling happy because of so much wine, and he asked seven personal servants, Meham, Bishva, Habona, Bigtha, Agatha, Zertha, and Karkis, to bring Queen Vashti to him. The king wanted her to wear her crown, and to let his people and his officers see how beautiful she was. The king's servants told Queen Vashti what he had said, but she refused to go to him, and this made him terribly angry. The king called the seven highest officials of Persia and Media. They were Karshan, Shetha, Admatha, Tarish, Meres, Messina, Mukunnain. These men were very wise and understood all the laws and customs of the country, and the king always asked them what they thought about such matters. The king said to them, Queen Vashti refused to come to me when I sent my servants for her. What does the law say I should do about that? The Mimkan told the king and the officials, Your Majesty, Queen Vashti has not only embarrassed you, but she has insulted your officials and everyone else in all the provinces. The women in the kingdom will hear about this, and they will refuse to respect their husbands. They will say, if Queen Vashti doesn't obey her husband, why should we? Before this day is over, the wives of the officials of Persia and Media will find out what Queen Vashti has done, and they will refuse to obey their husbands. They won't respect their husbands, and their husbands will be angry with them. Your Majesty, if you agree, you should write for the Medes and the Persians a law that can never be changed. And this law will keep Queen Vashti from ever seeing you again. And then you could let someone who respects you be queen in her place. When the women in your great kingdom hear about the new law, they will respect their husbands, no matter if they are rich or poor. King Eustace and his officials liked what Mimikin had said, and he sent letters to all of his provinces. Each letter was written in the language of the province to which it was sent, and it said that husbands should be in charge of their wives and children. After a while, King Yushis got over being angry, but he kept thinking about Vashti and what Vashti had done and the law he had written because of her. 
Then the king's personal servant said, Your Majesty, a search must be made to find you some beautiful young woman. You can select officers in every province to bring them to the place where you keep your wives in the capital city of Susa. Put your servant Hegai in charge of them, since that is, is his job. He can see to it that they are given the proper beauty treatments. Then let the young woman who pleases you most take Vashti's place as queen. King Yushis liked these suggestions, and he followed them. What a story that was. Did you want to know a little bit of background um, behind it? Uh, did you know that Song of Song and Esther, which we've just heard in that story, are the only two books of the Bible that don't mention God? It makes you think, doesn't it? The king asked, what does the law say I should do? The king wanted to know what to do. What would the right thing be to do in the situation? And the law had no answer. So instead, he allowed his anger to dictate what he would do. It could be that this story is one of those stories that has shaped history and society. Hannah Garrity has painted for us today a picture she's titled, I Dance Alone. And it's her picture of Queen Vashti. Hannah says this. Having the bravery and confidence to stand up to an inappropriate request from a superior is both paramount to the moral foundation of society and extremely difficult. We each know deep down when we are doing right or wrong. And in today's text, Vashti's modesty and fearlessness resonated with me. Hannah goes on to say, I imagined her recognising that her husband's demand for her to show her beauty to his drunken friends overstepped his bounds. Her simple reply was, no. No is feared by the male sages who knew the laws. They advised the king to cast Queen Vashti out and to replace her with a new queen. Here in my picture I have represented Vashti dancing alone. I see her living into her refusal with grace and beauty, exhibiting independence and strength in her solitary righteousness. Take a few moments now to gaze upon today's artwork. What do you observe in terms of colour or texture or line or shape or movement? What part of the picture are you first drawn to? Is there a part that on second look glance or second look you overlooked at first? Imagine you were to place yourself in this picture. Where would you place yourself? How would you interact with Queen Vashti? Let's consider the power dynamics of this story. Who holds the power? And how do those with power seek to maintain it? The book of Esther and Song of Solomons are the only books in the Bible that do not explicitly mention God. Where do you imagine that God is present in this story today?
What might this story have to say in the light of the Me Too movement to those who have survived sexual assault and abuse? Imagine your Queen Vashti. How would you write the next chapter of her story after being banished as Queen? Where does she go? How does she survive? I'll give you a minute now to allow your imagination to roam. And together we pray. Gracious God, may you be near to those who are cast out, harmed, or fearful of abuse. Amen.
Lord, we thank you for the people who have served us as we go about our daily lives. May we continue to seek you for wisdom and discernment. We pray for those in government. May they let go of the desire for power and control and lead with humility and courage. And as the lead up to our election starts, may you help us to discern how we should vote. Lord, hear our prayer. Give us wisdom and discernment. We pray for those in leadership in our church. May you enable them to connect with and listen to you and your guidance. Lord, hear our prayer. Empower those who lead with grace and love. We pray for those who are sick, who are struggling with mental or physical illness, who experience loneliness, fear and grief. Lord, hear our prayer. Help us to care well for those who need it. We pray for those without homes and jobs who struggle to make ends meet. Lord, hear our prayer. Inspire us to loving action. We pray for the places in the world where peace is still hoped for. We uphold those who work at the front lines, who bring medical aid and food to those who need it. Lord, hear our prayer. Help us to work together in the way of justice and peace. As Christ teaches us, we pray, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May God bless you with discomfort at easy answers, half-truths and superficial relationships, so that you may live deep within your heart. May God bless you with anger at injustice, oppression and the exploitation of people, so that you may work for justice, freedom and peace. May God bless you with tears to shed for those who suffer from pain, rejection, starvation and war so that you may reach out your hand to comfort them and to turn their pain into joy. May God bless you with enough foolishness to believe that you can make a difference in this world, so that you can do what others claim cannot be done. And the blessing of God who creates, redeems and sanctifies be upon you and all you love and pray for this day and forevermore. Amen. I